Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. On the agenda tonight, we are going to be taking a look at Def Leopard, and we're going to be cross-referencing performances from the 23rd of June, the 20th of July, and both of those were this year, 2025. And I'm also going to throw in Sydney from 2023 to see exactly what's going on. So the links to the original videos are in the description below in case you want to cross-reference anything. And full disclosure, I am a big Def Leopard fan, and I've been to see them multiple times live, but this analysis video isn't about about me, my musical preferences or bands that I'm into. It's just about objective analysis videos. So I'm just going to be pointing out exactly what's going on, relying on the objective pitch data. So we're going to start by having a listen to these three performances all playing back at the same time. So let's jump into it. And it's just going to be the isolated vocal, by the way. So, I mean, this is the first verse. As we get further in, so we've still got synchronization across these three performances into the chorus. Let me move on. So now we're. What, about two minutes into it, we still got synchronization going on. So that's what second chorus. Let's get to the end. So now we're into the final chorus, which will be what between three and a half minutes, four minutes into this performance, or should I say, into all three performances, and we are still perfectly synchronized, but. All that means is that the band are playing to a click track. It doesn't necessarily automatically mean that everything's not being played live and all that kind of stuff, as we saw in the U2 video, that they're playing to a click track, but it was all fully live. So now we'll jump into the pitch data, and we've got Joe Elliott's isolated lead vocal, but also the backing vocals in there. Let's have a listen. So I'm just going to jump in here because, I mean, I think tonight's video is going to serve a dual purpose as well as an analysis video on Def Leppard and their live shows relating it to previous videos that I've done. And I might um, feature another one so you can see some key differences that we've got going on and are related to some comments that I get as well. But when we start here, you can see if I just stop here in Sydney 2023, we have a little bit of a more um, loose entry into this particular first verse and it, 23rd of June in that performance, you can see that Joe actually came down and was between the C4, the C sharp 4, and here he actually ascends to just flat of the C sharp 4. So it means that across these three performances, we've absolutely got a different vocal going on at, at these three points. And they are as synchronized as they're going to be, but that doesn't mean that it's the same audio file. It means that the band, the instrumentation, is going to be perfectly in time with each performance, but the vocal is never going to be exactly the same unless it is the same audio file. So when we're looking at all of these, as regular viewers will know, when you've got the same audio file being played back, there will be sections where you can literally drag and drop these pitch lines over the top of each other because it's the same thing being played twice or three times however many performance we are, uh, we're looking at for the particular analysis video. So, yeah, working our way through all of that, we start to see, and I mean, the great thing is that because we are synchronized and playing to a click, it means that as soon as we hit a peak like this, we know as soon as it comes on screen that that's the same part of the song, the same note that Joe is hitting live. And if we're being you know, really strict with it. Here, 
you can see that he came in ever so slightly later. And we're looking at hundredths of a second here. So if I take this back a little bit, just frame by frame, you can see 20th of July, he's already come in and he hasn't yet come in in Sydney. And now he comes in 23rd of June. But, you know, as you can hear, I'm going frame by frame because it is hundredths of a second. But the great thing is that, you know, the pitch data is never going to lie. It's just going to give you objective data and objective information with which we can draw a conclusion at the end of tonight's analysis video. But let's have a look at pitch. F4 here, just a little bit flat of that. D sharp 4, so it means that we were a lot further off, well, we, what, a whole tone in terms of this little movement up that we had, 23rd of June. And then here, E4, and, and we know that these are all in the same key. So when I say about being a tone off, it's not because they've dropped the instrumentation, the backing by a tone. It's just where his voice fell on that particular night. So here, 20th of July, we are between the E4 and the F4. So that means that all of these three aren't matching up from a pitch perspective. Going back to my point that you can't sing over the same lines twice because that's why double tracking in the studio works. You're always going to get a unique vocal. But I'll move it forward because even though this first verse is three separate vocals that are never going to match up because they are live, they're all different. It doesn't mean that the whole performance is going to be live. We'll have a look through and see if anything does match up. Let's get into it again. And, I mean, the killer is always when you start a phrase or when a singer starts a phrase and you're getting a clean signal with the isolation software and the pitch monitor can pick that up clearly because it means that if this is just repeated two or three times, it's going to plot the same thing on the other graphs. So looking here between the B3 and the C4, we came in here. Here we peaked just above the C4, so we weren't between lines here. And now here we peaked just flat of the C sharp 4. And this isn't just flat, it's considerably more flat than over here. So this whole phrase has started again with three totally live unique vocals. I mean, and we can go through this. There we had between the E4 and the F4, and we had the F4 here that was pretty much bang on. And I mean, this looks like here that it, it was pretty much bang on as well. And great singers have the ability to do this, to be on A440, standard pitch, equal temperament, now and again. But if we're, again, gonna be really strict about taking this back like this, as we now move it forward, He's already now hit the note on the 20th of July and he's then hit the note, I mean, a fraction of a second later. Hopefully you can see on the right hand side of the screen that this line is already up to the F4 and here we're not yet up to the F4. We're kind of between lines. So he hit that line, but was a fraction of a second later on the 23rd of June. So. Anyway, I know we're looking at it in a lot of detail now, but it's just to show the, these subtle differences. But when you're looking at lines like this, you know, immediately this is never, you know, if, you know we're, we're talking about hitting a line on A440, the F4 perfectly, but we know that all of this is not matching up anyway. So that tiny bit that is slightly out of time, but was the same pitch, we know that those were two uh, totally separate live vocals and again if you're looking from here you know sharp the c4 pretty much between lines here we had a vibrato and then were between lines and descended and over here we have a totally different thing going on where we had a little wobble down between the a sharp three and the b3 so again all of these lines are going to look totally unique because they are they're separate performances but we'll let it play on and for all of these points where, you know, here the peak touches perfectly on the G4 and here we're sharp, we're between the G4 and the G sharp 4 and I don't think we've got that plotted, oh here we go, yeah, G sharp 4 and the, it's just flat of the A4 
on the 23rd of June. I mean, it's actually really cool that they're playing to a click and Rick Allen is this solid at playing to a click because it means that everything's going to be synchronized, but all of the vocal phrases are synchronized as well. So when we get to this point here, for example, and here and here, all we need to do is get the pitch data to when it just comes on and we can go frame by frame and see that 20th of July 2025, we're sharp of that G4. Over here, we're bang on the G4. And here, we came in just flat of the A4. So again, a dramatic difference between uh, these three performances. So it's a totally live vocal. And just to save you guys loads of time, this is going to be the same for the whole performance. So I can jump anywhere randomly and we're never going to get anything replicating from one show to the next because the vocal is totally live. And um, yeah, I mean, you guys can cross reference all of this if you want to and, you know, isolate J Joe's voice, but you'll just get these same results as, as I'm looking at here. But if you do have sensitive ears, as I believe I do have, when you're listening to these performances, we, we know they're playing to a click or, or Rick's playing to a click. So it's all going to be perfectly in sync. Now, do we have other things on the backing track? I mean, that is the question. For me, the most important part, and as a, a fan of the band, the most important part for me is that when we play this back, that lead vocal is so up front. That is so Joe Elliott's voice at the forefront of the mix. And we know that his voice is different in all of these performances. So he's still doing this live and it's a fully live vocal look going into the microphone. Now, if you're listening carefully, can you hear maybe a hint of Joe's voice in those backing vocals? For me, I would say that his voice is in there somewhere, but the other guys in the band are singing live as well and the backing vocals aren't on the backing track, apart from maybe, I mean, it's difficult to say how much is on there because yeah, they, they get such a full sound live. And obviously the production on their album tracks you know, is, is legendary. So they have to try and get close to that live. But as for what's on that backing track, it's difficult to tell because there are so many live vocals going on. And that's the really important thing to point out here that if you were to take out that, you know, let's say that Joe's vocal, harmony vocal is on the backing track. If you were to take that out, you've still got all of the band supplying backing vocals and Joe's lead vocal in there singing the lead line. So it's very much a, an incidental thing that isn't really going to change the sound that you're hearing, apart from maybe a little bit of extra fullness going on with those backing harmony vocals. So... Yeah, I mean, as a fan of the band myself, it's, you know, it's great that Joe is still just nailing it live and, and belting it out. When I say belting it out, he's got one of those voices that it doesn't seem like he's ever struggling. It, like he's you're know, reaching the top end of his chest voice or anything like that. He just has this quality to his voice where he seems to float around, you know, all of these kind of G4s, A4s. You know, B4, C5, D5, you know, he seems to somehow get his voice to those places and he's still doing that live. But as you guys know, in the past, when I've looked at bands and artists that I'm a fan of and some have turned out to not be singing live and it's always a bit of a shame to find that out. But doing objective analysis videos and dealing with objective data, you're just going to find out what is going on. And just to finish this video, I just want to show up on screen the difference between vocals that are entirely different from one show to the next with Def Leppard that we just looked at. And I'm loading up a previous analysis video. And this was ZZ Top, that analysis that we did, where we found that it was the same audio file being played back. The reason that I want to show this on screen is because of some of the comments that happen in the comments section where people, and even people who say that they're educated on the subject, 
They say that it is possible for singers to repeat vocal lines or sound exactly the same and sing over their vocal lines, but they don't understand that it is impossible. So here on screen, we have, I mean, this song, Joe has been singing for what, 40 years? So you think, well, if a singer is going to be able to sing their own song really accurately, that's a lot of practice in order to do that. But because it's impossible to do, it means that when you do line everything up, as you can see on the left hand side here, we've got, you know, this peak happening here in the E4 and another performance is between here and here the D sharp 4 is slightly flat and just nothing goes over the top of itself. It's never going to be a perfect match. And you might have a singer hitting the same note, and maybe that happens for a split second, but that just means that that happened at that split second during that performance. And it doesn't mean that it's the same audio file playing back. The reason that you know when the same audio file is being played back is because on the right hand side, this is what it looks like. And you'll start seeing similarities straight away, just like looking at it, you know, the fact that you'll be between lines here, between lines here, just sharp here, just sharp here. And yeah, it will get to the point where, you know, as we do in the analysis videos, where you get to the same pitch on the left hand side and then lo and behold, the lines cover over each other to the hundredth of a second. And this is including the ambient noise, which should throw everything off. And with the Def Leppard analysis that we've just done, again, that's crowd shot footage going on. And all of the ambient noise should make it less likely that things are going to, in exactly the same case as this, make it less likely that things are going to match up. So when you start seeing things that are not only matching up, but going over the top of themselves, then it's absolutely the same audio file. And I think maybe people just have to watch a few more of my videos to understand that this kind of thing is absolutely conclusive. And if it weren't conclusive, a lot of the high profile videos that I've got on my channel, they would not still be up. Legally, there, there have been many a legal team that have looked at my channel, seen the videos that I've done, but they know what, certainly the producers know, what this means. That is the same audio file and of course they'll know from the shows that they are doing what they're doing and they know that they're putting through the same audio file in the same track of their mixer for every show so yeah that and that's the only explanation for this but yeah when a band is truly doing it live when a singer is truly singing live it is going to be a unique vocal for that particular night in conclusion it means that Def Leppard are performing live and, and Joe's singing live and he was singing live this year on the 23rd of June the 20th of July and he was singing live back in 2023 so they're playing to a click as well are there other elements on that backing track I think there might be there might be Joe's backing vocal in there as well somewhere to thicken things up but I mean, what you're getting is a predominantly live sound. And I'm going to say that's the same for instrumentation as well, because, you know, the guitars are really up front. Are there any guitars on the backing track low in the mix? There might be. But what we're hearing, the predominant mix is live. And that's what I think is the most important thing, because it's when things on the backing track are the predominant thing that you're hearing, such as a lead vocal and backing vocals and instrumentation where you can't really hear what they're doing live because you're hearing the backing track. That's where I think it's now a bit of a problem because it's no longer a backing track. It's now a lead track. And I think backing should be backing. It shouldn't really you know, change what that predominant mix is. So yeah, um, I mean, it's great to put the spotlight on a band who are still doing it live. And we've got that fully live vocal and live backing vocals going on as well. So there we have it. Thank you guys for requesting to take a look at Def Leppard for tonight. Keep those requests coming to requests at wingsofpegasus.com. As always, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Rock!